Hey hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Pavitra and this is a web series where I will be digging into the code base of Preact. I hope you enjoy this and learn something new from it. So Preact is a an alternative for uh, the most famous framework right now in the JavaScript world, React. And uh, the whole total size of Preact is 3 KB. In this age of ja JavaScript, where we just pump out megabytes and megabytes of JavaScript to our users, there are frameworks which can do their whole entire job in 3KB. I'm really, really curious uh, to see if I can understand the code that's written. And um, to go a step further, I want to know if I can learn some tricks from them, which I can maybe use it when I write JavaScript code. Um, I could use a little less code in my life. What I'm going to try and do is open up Preact, download it from GitHub and uh, try to make sense of it. I've heard that it is notoriously difficult to make a contribution to Preact because their size restrictions are so damn difficult to adhere to. It's a 3KB framework. So only way I'll be able to get a change in is if I remove some code probably. Um, anyways, um, let's see what we can do. So I'm going to look for Preact. Cool. Preact.js is a fast 3KB alternative to React with the same modern API. I mean, right? Uh, we're not going to really get into the documentation and stuff like that because as far as my pre-research goes, there's no um, documentation pertaining to how Preact is written, like how, how the code base manages to be what it is. Uh, and we are going to try and discover just that. Let's open the Preact website. It's a nice purple. I like the logo. Yeah. If you know anything about React, then um, you probably don't need to go through this documentation. It apparently, has a repel too. Uh, repel is a read, evaluate, print loop. I'm surprised Preact can do that. I did not know about this. Uh, so Preact is now at its version 10.1.1. So it's been through a lot. Let's open the GitHub page. It has its own Twitter, right? Twitter Preact. Yeah, go Preact. I think we'll go straight to the source. It's a very, very popular project. Um, it's used by 18K, 18K <laughs> repositories. Close to 25K stars. Star that. Uh, and it's been forked quite a few times. Um, what we'll do right now Calcifer is the organization under which I try to write code. So now that the fork is done, let me clone this. Skip clone preact. It should be quick. It's after all 3KB library. Yeah, it was. Cool. So let's open the preview of this project. Um, I guess it wants me to npm install stuff. Let's do that. Preact. Okay, let's look at how to contribute to Preact. No, I'm not a core team member. Okay, so they don't have a guide for new people who want to learn about the code base, which is fine. Then this video will be more useful, I guess. Mm. Okay. So it has a bunch of scripts, you can build the core, you can build the whole thing. Hmm. 
okay this to run all the tests i suppose uh, the tests seem to be written using karma and mocha school i see a config json here Lint staged, uh, this is what will run as a pre-commit when you commit something uh, into this repository. Uh, Husky will actually set up the pre-commit and the pre-commit will run lint staged. The most interesting part of this package on JSON, if you ask me, is that there are no dependencies defined. You cannot see a single dependency. So all of Preact, it's just JavaScript. It's written in, in just JavaScript. They don't import a single file, third party file. You, you don't need to install stuff. All you need to install are, of course, dev dependencies, which is probably uh, Babel and uh, linting tools and the uh, pre commit tools. There's like testing tools and all these stuff, right? When you get a bundle of ReactJS, you get all of ReactJS. This nothing other than what's there in this code base, right? Um, which I think is like, oh, otherwise, how do you keep it under at 3 KB? 3 fucking KB. Uh, let's build it, right? Let's build it. Let's see what happens. NPM run, build. Cool, it runs a bunch of stuff. Build raw, build hooks, compare, test utils, debug. This should also not take long. It didn't. Uh, so it built all the things that it needed to build. This preact compact, this preact, this preact debug. I'm assuming all of it in the dist folder. Yep. That's it. That's the whole library cool what I will do is I will open the source folder let's do this so the source folder at least looks like a typical source folder which has all the source code I suppose uh, there's, there's only one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven files and the folder which has four files oh my god that's it that's preact wow but i'm assuming what gets packaged is the stuff uh, and these are type files mind you aren't they yeah these are files that just define the preact uh, apis external types that you can import and you can use in your typescript projects so go to it so this is basically the api of preact is you can render uh, like react.render you can hydrate you can create element create element has a shortcut to it can, there's a fragment you can create refs uh, it's valid element interesting does react have that I'm not sure um this is the component uh this is where you'll extend all of your components from i suppose uh this uh, clone element create context uh, this is uh, preax context api i'm thinking uh two child array unmount and a bunch of options options what options what kind of option is that? There's no render to string. Does that mean you can server side render stuff with the uh, Preact? I don't know. Uh, but why is there a hydrate API then? Uh, so in case you're not familiar, um, React API basically has um, a render uh, which allows you to render your application into a particular uh, div or like a div tag um a hydrate uh, so there's render to string also in react which allows you to uh, which kind of spits out the html of your app and you can uh, render it on the server 
uh, in some Node.js um, server. Uh, and then there's hydrate, which if I'm right, what it does is uh, it takes your render to string app um, and then hydrates. So when you render to string, you only have this bunch of HTML, uh, static HTML that you can just like uh, see, right? Uh, it's, it is only visual, uh, but which does not have any uh, interactivity to it. So hydrate, what it does is it looks at this HTML, uh, looks at whatever is um, uh, on the client side, the code, and then kind of patches it up with the interaction. <laughs> Mangle.json. What does Mangle.json mean? Mangle.json. Have you heard of this? Uh, I think. Oh, does it mean? Huh, when you uglify stuff. This is what it mangles stuff into. Yeah, it looks like when you minify things. What is this file? It controls protected private property mangling so that minified builds have consistent property names. Wow. I did not know you could do that. Interesting. Oh, so basically when things get minified uh, large uh, uh, function names variable names they'll get all all will get shortened and uh, replaced throughout that code base uh, this will help you save some bytes right um, but i think what this file does is it tells you what things should be shortened to which i didn't know you could do to understand this source what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the demo apps that uh, they seem to have very conveniently written up for me maybe i can go into demo Ooh, Preact render to string is a different um, package. So npm install here, I suppose. So what's the index.js look like? Whoa, it's a bunch of stuff. Okay, there's a simple one. It's so home. There's app. Okay, so the app has okay okay it looks like there's an app and the app renders onto document.body cool npm start okay yay so this is the home app and there's a bunch of other demo apps So now, how am I going to check if this is working correctly? It's by going to this index.js, no, to this render.js. I'm going to add a console.log. Okay, is running this. Okay, let's a compilation which i like pk is running this there we go okay we are all set up for um, understanding how preact works i think uh, that's where i'll end the first episode uh, uh, thank you for uh, watching 
let me know any thoughts uh, in the comments let me know what i could have done better let me know uh, how uh, does this format work for you until next time <laughs>